So before we start coding our health bar, we will have to create a new project or open an old project up if you want to implement it right away. Uh, you can create a 2D or a 3D project. This is going to work for both of them. So simply just click your preferred version of project. I am going to go with a 2D project um, for the simplicity of this. Um, but if you want to go with 3D, then feel free to do so. When you have selected your project type, give it a name and click the create button. And let's wait for Unity to open up. When Unity has opened up, I would like to put some order here. So inside my asset folder, I'm going to create a new folder called sprites. And this folder will contain all my sprites. And in this case, it's only my sprites for my health bar. So right click on assets, create folder and call sprite. Sprites. There we go. So now we have a sprites folder. I need to import my sprites. Um, and if you don't have the sprites for my project uh, or don't have any sprites at all, then you can simply just listen and follow uh, listening with listen without following along uh, because you need to skip this step. Um, I'll show you in a minute how you can follow along with the tutorial without any sprites from any other resources or any any sprites at all. Um, but yeah, for now, just just listen then. Um, I will need to import my sprites and you can of course import your own sprites if you created them yourself. Um, and I'm go just going to take them from off screen and drag them into the sprites folder here. If you have a 3D project, it's very important that you set, uh, change some settings here. So if you click on the sprite, you just imp import it or the sprites if you have more sprites that are not on a sprite sheet, then click on all of them select them and then select the sprite mode up here or not the sprite mode, the texture type sorry and make sure that sprite 2d and ui is selected if you don't select sprite 2d and ui then you're going to have a problem because um, th then it's not going to work with our ui elements that we're going to use later if you have a 3d project it should have selected the texture as texture type as default which means that you'll have to go up here and select sprite 2d and ui if you have a 2D project, you don't need to do this. You just need to keep it at Sprite 2D and UI, of course. So if you're working with a Sprite sheet or if you implement, you took my sprites and used them, then you need to select the Sprite, go to Sprite mode and select multiple sprites. Because we need to divide the Sprite sheet into single sprites before we can implement them on the screen here. So select that, click Sprite Editor and apply. And then you have to go to the top left corner here select automatic and select slice and then you can see it actually created a sprite or a, a rectangle for for every single sprite here so now it divided the sprites into um, single sprites and as you can see if you want to make your own sprites to follow along you can simply make two squares and that's enough then you can follow along with the tutorial if you click apply it will divide the sprites and then go back to unity if I could and when you're back in unity you'll see that there's a little arrow here on your sprites now and they are all divided in single sprites because you just did that little process there so now we have every single sprite as a standalone sprite when you have divided the sprites we can start adding the health bar to the screen to do so we will have to use the unity ui system and we will have to click the create button go to ui and then select the image when you have done that, it will add an image to the screen. And don't worry, I'll show you what you can do as an alternative if you don't have the sprite sheet handy in a few seconds. Um, but for now, just follow along with all this uh, I'm doing right now. And then I'll show you what you should do instead of selecting one of these sprites later. When you added the image, some other things were also added to the scene. A canvas was added and an event system was added. So basically the canvas is always needed to be able to show some UI elements on the screen. And if you can see here, if we take this square and move into the into the screen, you'll see that if I take the image and move it outside the canvas, so it's not a child object of the canvas anymore, you'll see that it disappears. And this means that every single UI element in our in our game will have to be the child object of a canvas. You can have more canvases in one scene and you can have one canvas in one scene if that's, if that's what you want. Um, but you need at least one canvas to be able to show um, stuff on screen. And as you can see, the canvas here is that 
big white square as you can see here when I move it around um, inside the canvas you'll see that it, it moves around on the screen as well. Okay, so with a little basic about the UI system in, in place we can start creating our health bar. First of all we'll need to create the background of our image. So I'll have to select source image and then find the background and the background of my uh, bar is the yellow one here. If you don't have these uh, sprites or if you have some other sprites of course click on them then you can use the basic sprites there is in Unity. As you can see here there is already something called background in Unity and you'll be able to use that as well as you if, if you don't have the sprites you can click on that one and use that as a sprite background for your health bar but if you have my sprites or any other sprite select uh, the yellow one for mine or, or your own background. When you have selected your own sprite click on the set native size button and this will make the sprite very very huge as you can see here it makes it very large because it's a very big resolution to make it into the size that you want simply click the set native size and then select the tool to the far right here then you can grab a corner and then hold shift down and then scale it down to the size that you want when you've done so you can take and move it in onto the screen and place it on in the position that that you want it to be placed in. So now I have put it onto onto the screen here as I want it in the position and the size that I want. You could always readjust this later so it fits your game better. Um, but for now, I think the size is actually uh, kind of fine. Maybe I make it a little wider, like so. But yeah, this should be okay. So if I play the game now you'll notice something. If I press maximize and play and play the game, you'll see that my sprite jumps jump from the corner here to the middle of the screen or almost the middle of the screen. And that's because we need to set up our canvas. As I just said before, we have a canvas here and the canvas is used for displaying sprites. So we'll need to set up some um, settings on this one so that this doesn't jump to the middle and that it doesn't change size. As you can see here, the width of this is almost half of the screen. But when I play in maximized, it's it's barely one fourth of the screen here. Um, it's not even one fourth, I think, of the screen. So first of all, to fix the, the problem with the scaling, we'll have to select the canvas, select um, canvas scalar. And there is something called constant pixel size. And this means that the the UI will always have the same amount of pixel size no matter of how big the screen is. To fix this we can click on it and click scale with screen size and I'm just going to keep the reference resolution as 800 times 600. You can switch this around if you want to. You can see the size changed a little but if I click play and maximize now you'll see that it still has the correct size um, as it had before. So at least for now the size is correct. But there is one more thing we'll have to fix before we are sure that this um, bar here is placed at the same position no matter what. And that is the anchors here. Um, there are four anchors here and every single anchor, every single of these little squares here, has a relationship to one of the corners of the sprite. So the top left anchor has a relationship to this one and the top right one has a relationship to this one. And that relationship it is, is described in distance, which means the distance between this anchor and this corner here needs to be the same regardless of the screen size. So to make sure that the sprite doesn't move around on other screen sizes, we can simply take the anchors or select the sprite and select the rect transform here and select the top left corner. So now the distance between the top left corner and all these corners here are going to be the same regardless of the screen size as well. Um, so I, I just usually put it in the top left corner there. You can also grab the anchors here and uh, drag them around if I only I could here. There we go. So you can see you can put it wherever you want it to. So the distance here is going to be the same if we put it here. Then the distance is going to be the same between those two points um, regardless of what. But the I think the best um, pivot point or the best reference point is the top left corner here if you have something in the top left corner of the screen. Of course, if you have in the right corner, this right here, well then simply place the anchors in the top right corner as well instead. 
uh, yes. But that was a little about the UI, um, how to make sure that everything is placed correctly and it has the right size. Um, besides that, we'll have to take our image here and we need to click on it and press F2 or click over here and rename it to, um, let's call this one health bar. So this is going to be our health bar. Besides that, we will also need to put in um, the other sprites on it so it looks more like a health bar. So to do so, we'll have to right click on it, create a click on UI and select image. So this is going to be our mask. So basically we can click F2 and call this one mask. And you'll see in a minute why it's going to be called mask. When you have selected the mask, you can click on the source image on the little radio button and select your background for the bar because I'm going to have background, uh, sorry, the background bar, then I'm going to have some place to place the actual colored bar on, and then in the end I'm going to place the colored bar on top of this one. So select that and um, make sure that it has set native size and then hold shift down and then simply scale it down or to a size that you would like to have inside your bar here. I'm going to place it a little more to the right. There we go, and I'm going to scale it a little down here. And I'm I'm going to leave out, out a little room for the icon out here in the side. So basically I think this suits it well. There we go. So now we have some place where we can fill in where, where we can fill in our color. As you can see the mask also has a an anchor point. Um, and you can just put that in the top left corner as well and it's going to go in the top left corner of its parent which is the health bar. Okay. Now we have the mask in place. Um, the next thing we're going to do is to create our content. So right click on the mask, click on a UI and select the image. And this is going to be the filler. So basically we can click on the source image here and select our color or that thing we are going to fill in here. Set native size and then scale it down. And basically this one needs to be the same size as, as the other one. So I guess we can basically take the mask here and I'm not sure, can you right click here? Yeah, you can right click on the rect transform if you select your mask. Then right click on the rect transform, copy component, select your image. Right click on the rect transform and paste uh, component values. There we go. So now it at least has the same size. Um, the position is not, it's not the same because it's not a child object of health bar, but you can just move it to the right position now. So now it has the same size. Okay. As you can see here, this health bar can be moved around and outside our mask right now. But to make sure that we don't get any edges outside the mask, we can simply click on the mask, click Add Component, and then write Mask. And then you'll see there's something called a mask and a 2D rect mask. We are simply going to use the old mask here, the normal mask. So click on that one. And then make sure that Show Mask Graphic is on. When we have a mask, it is masking everything that is a child of, of itself which means if we take the image now and move it around, you'll see that it disappears when it goes outside the mask here. So it's only visible inside our mask, as you can see here. So in the old tutorial, I had some functionality that I made sure that our image would go to the left here when we lost our health, and it will go to the right when we regained our health like so. But we are going to use a filler instead. It's, it's more easy and it makes it more precise when it go, comes to moving the health bars around in the world and putting them on top of enemies that runs around and stuff. Um, and it's an easy way to do it. So it looks maybe a little better when it's steady because we have this rounded edge here when we move it to the left. Uh, but we are going to use a filler instead. Uh, so the mask here is just added as a little precaution so that we never will be able to put a bar outside the actual background of the mask. There we go. So now we have our mask. So how are we going to indicate the health or manner, whatever you might ask? Well, first of all, we need to select our image 
and click F2 to rename it and rename it to content. There we have our content and if you select it, you will see that there is something called an image type. So the image type is actually the way we are going uh, is what we are going to change. Right now it's set to fit simple, but we need to select filled. And the fill method should be horizontal. So basically you can also make a vertical bar that goes from top and down or a radial bar that goes around. I'm just going to show you how to do it horizontal right now. You can see if we select vertical, it will go for, I'm going to show that in a second, sorry. <laughs> so select horizontal. And then you'll see the origin is from the lift. So if you want it to go from lift here and go down this way, you select lift. And if you want to go the other way, you select right. Um, you can see the fill amount here is what we are going to change from our script. So if we take this little bar and go down, you'll see that it goes all the way down and all the way up. So this value of one will be based on the health or mana or whatever we have. So if we have 100% mana, we show one. If we have 50% mana, we show 0 0.5 and so on. So this is exactly what we're going to do. You can see if I change origin from right, you'll see that it goes the other way. So if you have a health bar to go that way, you can do that. And also you could say we needed it to be uh, vertical instead, then it goes from top and down like so. So if you have something that needs to fill up like so, you can also do that. Um, and there's also radial where it's like goes around like so. So you can also make a rounded health bar is that what you want. But I am going to show you from uh, horizontal from lift. Yeah, this is the classic one. That's what I'm going to show you. Okay. So besides that, our bars will have different colors. Um, the colors can be selected here on the color. Select the color here. And if we want a red bar, we select red. Let's say that we want a green one, like so. So this is my green health bar right now. Besides that, we also have our little icon. So basically we can right click on our health bar and set, uh, select um, UI, select image, and then rename this image to icon and move it all the way up as a child object of the health bar. Would like it over a mask here. And when you have selected the icon, select the source image. If you don't have a, an icon, it's fine. Just skip this step. Select the image you want, set native size, hold shift down, scale it to the size you want, and place it at the position that you want if you want a little icon here. And you can tilt it if you want to, and you can put it where you want to. So now we have a little heart here. And again, select the rect transformer, select the top left corner. So it's always there. And if we click play now and maximize, let's see what happens. Yeah, then everything looks fine. So now we have a health bar here that indicates our health so far. Um, in the next video, we are going to be adding the functionality for reducing our health for our health bar. And then later we will add other bars so you can see how easy it is to take the functionality that we just made in the, in the scripts we're going to create and just create a new bar in a matter of, of minutes or like two minutes or something it will take to create a new bar. Maybe not even that long. Um, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's useful. And of course, if you have any uh, suggestions, any add, uh, any pointers, any, um, any add-ins to this tutorial series, then please feel free to write it in the comments um, or write me an email or something. Because if you have a request for something, then of course I'll try to implement it in this uh, series as usual as also in all of my other series, of course. So thank you for watching. And remember that you can follow me on Twitter, like my Facebook page and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it already. Also remember that Inscope Studios is a community founder page. So all your support is very important to me. You can support me in different ways. You can go to the Patreon page in the top of the screen right here, where you can support me and get access to all my projects that I've created so far. And of course, you also get early video accesses and you can also get private tutoring. If you are interested in this project, you can also support me by getting this or any of my other projects as a standalone package. 
uh, you can do that by clicking the link in the description below or by clicking the link in the bottom of the screen right here. Thank you very much for watching.